this is day three of my trip and I'm going to explore Huangshan. I heard about this popular ancient village which receives many visitors throughout the year and I was curious to know what it is like. So I searched and found it on my GPS and then set destination for that village. Let's go explore this village together. It's 10 11 in the morning as it is shown on the clock on my motorcycle and I'm right at a hotel entrance I'm going to set off to my destination for today my first site to to visit the temperature is about 21 degrees Celsius perfect weather and it's sunny out so it's gonna be a good day for good videos and I don't have to worry about rain or anything I'm gonna to go to visit a village one of the ancient villages of China uh, to take a look at how people lived and also the architecture and everything as it was in those years and I'm taking you along the GPS says it's a distance of 64 kilometers to arrive there and the time suggests it's 1 hour 45 minutes but I'm gonna try to do it faster I don't know we'll see how it goes It's a nice park here on the riverfront. Uh, so it's a really nice area. This is the Tungxi district of Wansha. Really clean, really organized. There's a there's a river all along, all around this place. Some really nice houses as well. Almost looks like villas, restaurants, and stuff like that. There's a whole riverfront you can walk. Very, very nice area. As I reached the outskirts of the city, there was a little buildup of traffic, suggesting that many people were headed for the touristic areas as well. I'm almost halfway between my hotel and the village and I'm in the outskirts of the city all I see around me are villages and the natural environment is beginning to pop again mountains, farms, village houses, gardens, stuff like that so quiet, so peaceful the roads are as usual windy windy but I'm enjoying it I'm starting to feel like it's cool as well and there are so many rivers around here so everywhere you look on my left side there's a nice river not too much water in it it's just flowing on the river floor but yeah a very nice nice area there's a highway right there going through the mountain there's a tunnel it's interesting almost all all the village houses are painted white with this Chinese style roofing I've noticed that about China I need I need to find out why it is so almost every village you see in China the houses are usually all, all the same color and it's usually white why white and why the same color something I need to find out I'm completely sucked into nature here look at this view and look at the landscape awesome isn't it it's a sight to behold very very nice Wow! Enveloped by the mountains on these windy roads. How beautiful is that? Looks like they're cultivating some kind of, I don't know, some kind of flower or some kind of tea. Some kind of terrace farming along the slopes. 
But look at the view. This is something to die for. I just had to stop by this natural wonder, which looked like a piece of heaven that had been sprinkled here. It was simply breathtaking. Soon I was on my way again along mountain roads. Due to the nature of the terrain and the winding roads, traffic was quite slow as everyone was being cautious to avoid any major incidents. The views were absolutely beautiful and sometimes distracted me a little bit. At this point, I think I had completely forgotten the world behind me. I've just come across this beautiful valley environment and the view is very beautiful. There's a very interesting bridge house over there. The bridge house here reminded me of the famous bridge house in Ambleside, England. The semblance of these two is very striking. If you look down here, you can see a lot of people doing different activities, children and their families, children and their parents, families playing in the streams. The water looks very, very clean. And right above it, there is this bridge house, which is really nice. And you've got some nice village houses here as well. So a very nice stream area. I believe the river is kind of dry now because we are in autumn and the water is shallow enough for playing. It's a very, very beautiful view. Predominantly, there's a lot of tea out here. They do a lot of tea farming. And I'm sure it's because of the nature of the land. It's very hard ground with stones, so only certain crops will do well here. But overall, a very nice place to see. And it was worth stopping by just to take a look at it. I then quickly found myself besides beautiful mountains and rice fields, a slice of heaven as I call it. To say nature is wonderful is an understatement. After about two hours of riding, a little over two hours, I've arrived at Hongtong village and I'm here to see what it has to offer. Let's go. At first glance, the entrance to this ancient village looked like other ones I had seen in China. However, the presence of a ticket office suggested that perhaps this one was special. They even accept major international payment cards to make it convenient for everyone. Hello. My PL. Okay. So I got my ticket. The ticket cost me 52 Chinese yuan as a foreigner, which is about 7.4 US dollars. And I'm just going to walk to the entrance and try to enter this crowded place. This is a, one of the main reasons I came here, so it has to be explored. We're currently exploring a Chinese-style century-old village. visitors inside as expected on a holiday and there was a lot of sightseeing and business going on. Oh. 
Very nice. All these are handmade, handmade stuff. Exploring the alleys of the old village. This is how people lived centuries ago. It's really nice to be able to relive what happened here centuries ago. With so many little, little shops all over the place. People cashing in. The local economy here must be really good. The small streets were also loaded with local snacks, which I wanted to try. But I first wanted to explore the sites of the village before anything else. I've just entered this shop here and this man makes some amazing rings, necklaces and bracelets. bracelets. Basically all kinds of jewelry. And as you can see, he's at work now, polishing one of his works. Is it a fish? I was interacting with this lady trying to understand one of the items she was selling which looked like fish to me which she insisted wasn't I don't know where this crowd is going but whatever, wherever they're going it seems like a busy place I want to go to and see what, what is out there they say if you go to a place and you don't know what is going on and you see a lot of people going to a place, you don't know what's going on there, just follow them. It means something is going down. The crowd led me to this water pond located in the middle of the village. So this is a south lake, almost like a square where you have various stalls and tables and small, small shops where they're selling different items. And it's kind of like a courtyard and I believe if this is originally how it was, this must have been a famous courtyard of the village centuries ago. I hope it is preserved as it was centuries ago. I'm just standing right here at the lake and it's, that's why a lot of people were coming here because it seems to be a very popular place. The Leshu Hall was built during the reign of Emperor Yongle during the Ming Dynasty and it was used for occasions such as meetings, ancestral worship, punishment and marriage. It had several objects and depictions dating hundreds of years, and this was very interesting to see. I also got to see this famous tree, supposedly aged 500 years, which was very important to the villagers for different purposes. It was then time to get something to eat as I was starving. <laughs> After going through the menu, I decided to settle for this. So it's rice, a bowl of rice and some pork. I know it's very fatty, but throughout this journey, I haven't really had any like proper meal. So I think that I need something to replenish all my um, nutrients. So kill eating this once will not kill me. But yeah, this was something that was familiar on the menu. I didn't want to try anything that will bring any surprises. So. I'm not going to be able to finish all this, but I'll just eat what I can and leave the rest. All right, guys, so I've just finished exploring the old style Chinese village and overall the tour was exciting. I'm happy I was able to make it out here. This is one of the main reasons why I came here. 
and uh, the food was just okay but for 70 a little over 70 rmb which is about 10 dollars i felt like it was too much that particular meal which i know very well in other restaurants even in a city center is going to be way cheaper i'm sure it's because of the touristic nature of this place and how far it is from from anything and so the price is much higher than but at, at least i have something in my tummy now in my stomach so i have more energy to do what i want to do for the rest of the day now i'm going to head out to another lakeside which i want, wanted to visit as part of this trip it's about 70 kilometers from here where the gps is going to take me about two hours and 15 minutes give or take so i'm going to head out now to that place let's go it was a nice visit to this old village and yeah this this rice field is also very nice the colors of the drying or the ripening of the rice make it makes it look beautiful right behind it is a mountain and the rice farm is kind of in a valley R makes it really nice i'll see how much time it will take me to arrive at the lake i really want to see it and so if i can get there before sunset and maybe catch a glimpse of the sunset that would, that would be great human of flesh and blood can deny this beauty. I've been traveling over an hour on these roads and the environment, the terrain is always like this. Meandering roads, mountains everywhere, small villages, valleys. So I can't really ride fast. It's beautiful, but there's no straight road to ride fast. I'm enjoying it though. Fingers crossed, we'll get there in about one hour. I especially enjoyed riding through these farming communities. It was like stepping back in time. I'm arriving at my destination, Taiping Lake. A while back on the left side, I saw the lake already, but I want to get to where the GPS is taking me. Arriving at my destination, the site was one of a whole economy built around the lake. So a whole economy here. An economy built around the Taiping Lake. So I guess I have arrived. I was just showing that if I go straight ahead, I'll have a better view of the lake. So I'm just going to move ahead, see if I can get a better view. Uh, I'm guessing this way. guessing it's down here because this is going downhill if anything at all yes this will lead to a lake welcome to Taiping Lake the view was mesmerizing when I finally arrived at the lakeside the sunset was amazing
There are many cruise boats taking people on cruises. I arrived here late. They are all coming back to dock at the port. They're closed for the day. I should have come earlier if I wanted to get on the boat. Maybe next time, but I really enjoyed the view. I'm going to head back to my hotel. It's going to take me about three hours, so let's start leaving. Although I wanted to stay longer, I had to head back because it was going to get dark soon as I didn't want to ride too long in the dark. The last views of the lake and the shadows of the sunset were the icing on the cake for me. Taipin Lake in all its glory. Beautiful. These are the last views of the day before night falls. 